Good morning. Welcome back to my Learn with Tony tutorials. Today we are continuous with the Espanol Essential, the Spanish Essential, Saibang Aman Gaito, the Zila Ola, La Gadegoria Gamadigao, determining the type and the parts of the speech. We will talk about time and routine. The Zila Ola, determining the type. Ge Ola is what type is it? Ge is what aura is ours or the type as this means is this or is this you are or are you get aura as it means what type is it as la una if this is one o'clock we use the article a as la una it is one that means it is one o'clock it is one hours son la dos son la tres if the time is more than one o'clock, let's say it's two o'clock, three o'clock, or four o'clock, until twelve o'clock, we use the last for the articles, the plural the, and so on, mean are, they are three o'clock, or they are four o'clock, son la tres, or son la cuatro. In Spanish, if this is one o'clock, we use the verb is, and the article la, the singular article. I mean, it's more than one o'clock, from two until twelve, we use the verb a, son, and the article last. This means more than one o'clock. So, is it one o'clock or they are three o'clock? Es la una y media. This is one and a half. Media is a half. So, it's one and a half. This is one thirty. Son la cinco menos bende. Menos mean minus. Bende, 20 minutes. So son la cinco. They are five minus 20 minutes. So this is 440. Son la cinco menos bende. Or you can say son la cuatro y cuarenta. They are four and 40 minutes. Son la cuatro y cuarenta. It continues to telling time. They see la hora. If you want to discuss at what time a particular event will occur, you can use a question. A que hora? At what time? Answer with a la una, a las dos, or a la tres, etc. Any time up to one, you use a las at more than one o'clock. A la una is one o'clock only. A que hora vienes? At what time are they coming? Or at what time are you coming? Bienes means they are coming or you are coming. Are they coming or are you coming? Again, hola, bienes. At what time are they coming? And you remember to give a question mark at the end of the sentence and also a reverse question mark at the beginning of the sentence. This is the grammar in Spanish. If the answer may be a la una, as one o'clock, that means as one o'clock, they will come. And a las tres y cuatro, it's three o'clock and a quarter. Cuadros mean a quarter, mean 15 minutes. You can also use a la tres y cinco. This means three o'clock and 15 minutes. It's the same. You can either say a la tres y cuatro, a la tres y quince. Turning time again. They see la hora. The foreign chart shows how to expect time after and before the hour. One o'clock, la una, two and five, las dos y cinco, three and ten minutes, las tres y diez, four fifteen, las cuatro y cuatro, or las cuatro y quince, five twenty, las cinco y veinte, six twenty-five. La seis es veinticinco. Seven thirty. La siete y media. O la siete y treinta. Seven forty-five. Las ocho menos veinticinco. O la siete y treinta y cinco. Eight forty. Las nueve menos veinte. O las ocho y cuarenta. Nine forty-five. Las diez menos cuatro. O las nueve y cuarenta y cinco. 10.50, las 11 menos 10, o las 10 y 50, 11.55, las 12 menos 5, 
o las 11 y 45 at noon, el mediodía. And you notice that it is noon, the article is used the masculine article. And at midnight, la medianoche. And the article is a feminized article. So you have to remember to change the article either to masculine or feminized, depend on the nouns or on the type after the article. There's still a lot of There are some ways you may need to use when you are telling type a second, un segundos, a minute, un minutos, a quarter of an hour, un cuarto de hora, an hour, una hora, a half hour, media hora, in the morning, por la mañana, in the afternoon, p.m., por la tarde, in the evening, p.m., por la noche, at what time, a qué hora, at exactly nine o'clock, a las nueve en punto, puntos mean exactly, at about two o'clock, a esos de las dos, esos, is around, is about, in an hour, and una hora. In a while, tento de un rato. Rato mean a while. Tento de un rato. Until ten o'clock. Hasta las diez. Before nine o'clock. Ande de las nueve. After seven o'clock. Después de las siete. Después mean after. And de in here mean of. After of seven o'clock. Sin what types? Deres, que hora? Deres means sin. Sin eight o'clock. Deres, las ocho. One hour ago. Hace una hora. Early, temprano. Late, tarde. You can see in here, dades mean afternoon. And in here, dades mean late. So it also depends on the context of the sentence. Late in arriving. There is this is a general, the time is late, and this is, for example, you want to tell someone coming late, you use retazo, de retazo, late in arriving. And now we are talking about the parts of the speech. Some of the people, or too many people, try to translate word for word from English to Spanish. And you know that this just doesn't work. English example is that, it is raining cats and dogs. It only means it's raining heavily. You just can't translate this into Spanish word by word. You have to understand the parts of which and to translate into Spanish, not from word to word. Using of nouns. A noun is the part of the speech that refer to a person, a place, things, quality, idea, or action, or the person. The boy is friendly, el muchacho, and muchacho is a masculine noun, so you have to use the masculine el here. El muchacho es amable. If we're talking about pace, I want to go home. Home is a noun, and this is a pace. I want guerrero, and you know that this guerrero is come from the word guerrero, to want, and guerrero mean I want. Quiero y a casa. I want to go to a house. That means I want to go home. And the noun talking about things, I would like to see that book. Quisiera is I would like to. It also comes from the word querer, to want. Quisiera ver ese libro. I would like to see that book. And we're talking about the quality. I admire her courage. Courage is a quality. Amiros mean I am might. Su. Su in here can be your, her, his, or their. But in this sentence, it means her. Goraje. Courage. Amiros su goraje. I am her courage. Idea. Communism is a political theory. El communismo. Communismo is the noun, and this is the masculine noun, so we use the article L. As communismo es una teoría política. 
is a theory of political. This means it's a political theory. Action. We use the noun for some action. The pen departure is imminent. Departure is a noun. This means the action of the pen leaving the airport. La partita. And partita. This is a feminized noun, so we use the article la. La partita del avión es imminente. The pen's departure is imminent. In everyday speaking or writing, we use nouns most often in the foreign forms as a subject of a word. For example, Maria speaks Spanish. Maria habla español. We have to change it into habla. Uh, I will teach you how to conjugate the main word habla into habla at chapter three. Maria is the noun, is the subject of the sentence. Maria habla español. Maria speaks Spanish as the direct object of a word. For example, I see Maria. Yo veo a Maria, and you notice know that in Spanish, and you can omit this yo in some case. Veo means I see. We have to add a, an r to this sentence if the following is a person or an object. So Maria is the noun. And this is the direct objects of this sentence. I see, Bells and Maria. I see Maria. And also sometimes as the indirect object of a word. What is mean by indirect? For example, I spit to Maria, and Maria is the indirect object. Yo le abo a Maria, and you can see this le here. Mean her or he. Yo is I. I speak to her, but who is she? She is Maria. So in Spanish, we can say "yo le abo" and omit a Maria. But if we want to emphasize that I speak to Maria, we have to ask a Maria. "Yo le abo" a Maria. Literally, I her to speak to Maria. This means I speak to Maria. Yo le abo a Maria, and also as the object of a preposition. That means as an object after a preposition. For example, in the, in here the preposition with gone. Yo salí con Maria. Saria, I went out with Maria. So Maria here is the object of the preposition gone. Yo salí con Maria. I went out with Maria, and Saria. Is from the infinitive verb salir, to go out. Salir, I went out. Unlike English nouns, all Spanish nouns have a gender, either masculine or feminine. All words you use to qualify or describe a noun must agree with the noun with respect to its gender. We will discuss this in more detail in Chapter Two. Substituting pronouns. Sometimes we use a pronoun instead of a noun. A pronoun is a part of speech used in place of a noun. And the subject pronoun, we will discuss it in chapter three, are followed up by the verb expressing the main action in the sentence. For example, I, you, he, she, it, we, or they. Like this example, you are nice. Usted es simpático. Usted means you. It's a person. If you are Tom. This means Tom as symbolical. If you are Peter, Peter as symbolical. Usted, and the long form of usted is U S T E D. Usted. It means you. It's a formal you. Interrogative pronouns. We will see it in chapter five when you ask a question about who, which, what, and so on. For example, who is that? Quién es. This means who is that, or who is it. Or、who are you? Gns, and you can see in an interrogative sentence, you have a question mark at the end of the sentence, and also a reverse question mark at the beginning of the sentence. And gn mean who. And we will talk about the direct object pronouns in chapter two as well. Replace the direct object nouns. They answer whom or what the subject is acting upon, not who do the action. The direct object pronouns are me, de, lo, la, and in Spain we use le, 
rather than law or la. Nos means us. We in Spain we use os. Los means day or you. Las is a feminized day or use, but in Spain we use less. I will be seeing you. Que peo que mean you, but this is a direct object pronoun you, not the subject pronoun you. Peo I see, or I will see. Que peos I will see you, and you can see in this examples we push the direct object pronouns in front of the words I see or I will be seeing. In direct object pronoun, we also talk in chapter two. Replace the indirect object nouns. They expand to or for whom something is done. They include me to me, de to you, le to him or to her, nos to us. In Spain, we use os to us and les to them. He wrote to me, me escribir. Escribir is the past tense of the word escribir. Escribir. He wrote or she wrote. May ask be all. She wrote to me. Reflexive pronoun. Reflexive pronoun is referred to the pronoun itself, just like the English myself, himself or herself. We will talk about this more in chapter three. So that the subject is acting upon itself. May mean myself. De yourself. Say herself or himself. Nos ourselves. And say also mean yourselves in plural form. We use us for the ourselves in Spain. For example, he see himself in the mirror. El sebe. You can see sebe mean he see himself. And el espejo in the mirror. Espejo is the noun mirror. And also we use the prepositional pronoun. We will discuss more in chapter four. Are used after preposition. Me, ti, else, ella, usted, nosotros, and vosotros. Me, you, him, her, you, us, or yours, ellos, there, ellas, and usted. This is the feminized there, and this is the masculine there, and usted. Is yours in plural form. They are going to the movie without me. So this is the preposition because it comes after the without. So it's the preposition pronoun. We use me for me in English. Ban al cine. They are going to the cinema or going to the movie. Ours is come from two words r l, and we join this into one word ow. Ban al cine. They are going, or they go to the cinema. Sin means without. Sin me, without me. Bans are cine, sin me. They are going to the cinema, or they are going to the movie without me. And now we are talking about acting with the verb. A verb is a part of speech that shows an action or a state of being. In Spanish, as in English, verbs change from their infinitive form. They are conjugated in other verbs. As follow: To agree with the person performing the action, I. For example, if you say I spit, just like that. But if you say he spit, you have to add an S into this. If this is the first person singular form of the verb, so this is called the conjugation of the infinitive verb. It depends on the subject. The verb will change its form, so the person performing the action will change the form of the verb. I, you. He, she, it, we, or they. You have to be very careful. The conjugation in Spanish is much more difficult than the conjugation in English. We will come over this in the later chapter to indicate the time when the action was performed. Let's say the past tense, person tense, or the future tense. And in English, we know that in the past tense, some of the regular verbs we add ed, and some of the irregular verbs. We just change into another form of the verb, and in the future tense, we will add the auxiliary verb will. Let's say I will go to the cinema. This is the future tense, and also in Spanish, the form of the words is also changed if this is in past tense, present tense, or in future tense. In the first case, to indicate the mood, indicative, subjunctive, imperative. 
or conditionals of the action. So the verb in Spanish have to be changed, have to be conjugate, depending on the person performing the action, the time when the action was performed, and also the mood of the action. The infinitive of the verb in its law form is to form. Before it is conjugated, the infinitive in Spanish have three different endings, and you conjugate them according to this ending, the AR ending form, ER ending form, and the IR ending form. We will talk about this in details in the later chapter, because the conjugation of Spanish words is very difficult, so we leave it to the later chapter. Adjective is also a very important part of speech in a sentence. An adjective is a part of speech that describes a noun. For example, the house is right. This adjective describes that the house is with the right color. In Spanish, la casa es banga, and the color rice is bango. But when you describe with the noun, it's a feminized noun, you have to change this O into A. So you have to say, la casa es banga, not la casa es bango. A possessive adjective tells to whom the nouns belong to. For example, this libro is a book. This book is belong to me, so this is my book. This me is my book. As mi libro. This is book belong to me. As mi libro. This is my book. A demonstrative adjective. So this, that, or this, or those. The adjective is esa, mean that. That film is good. Película is the film, and this is a feminized noun. So the esa is a feminized adjective. That. Esta película es buena. And also, buena mean good. And is referred to the película, so the buenos have to be changed to buenas. Adjective also have to be agreed with the gender of the nouns, so the esta película es buena, that film is good. And also an interrogative adjective, ask the question whose, which, or what, whose car is that, de quien, who, belong, es este coche, is that car, belong to whom, is that car. That means whose car is that? De quien es ese coche? A number, cardinals or ordinal number, see the counting down section earlier in this chapter, is an adjective that gives a specified amount. For example, a pen, un polígrafo. This is an adjective. And this adjective describes just only one pen. So this is a number, a cardinal number or ordinal number to describe the polígrafo. Necesito, I need. This necesito is come from the words necesitar, to need, or to want. Necesito un polígrafo, I need a pen. This is his 10th birthday. Decimo is 10. Es su décimo, gombe año. And in here, you can see the word su means his, her, your, or their. This so is depend on the context of the sentence. Es su décimo cumpleaños. This is his 10th birthday, or this is your 10th birthday, or this is her 10th birthday. So we have to see the whole passage in order to know that this shoe is her or his or your. Now we are looking with adverb. Adjective is to describe a noun, and adverb is to describe an adjective, a noun, or an adverb itself. An adverb is a part of which that modifies a verb, an adjective, or another adverb. Modifying a verb, we speak quickly. Uh, in the sentence here, you can see we speak. And how quickly we speak, or how slowly we speak, we use the quickly to describe the accent of the speak. So quickly is an adverb. You speak quickly. Usted habla rápidamente. Also, an adverb used to modify an adjective as well. For example, her grandmother is very old. You can just say her grandmother is old. But how old is it? It's very old. This word very is an adverb. Su abuela, his grandmother, or her grandmother. Su abuela es muy vieja. Her grandmother is very old. And also, an adverb modifying an adverb itself. They eat slowly, and slowly is an adverb to disguise how is the speech of they eat. And we emphasize this is too slowly. So this too here is an adverb to disguise another adverb slowly. They eat too slowly. Ejo, gomen. Gomen means they eat. 
demasiado despacio, demasiados, too, debacios, slowly. Ellos comen demasiados debacios, they eat too slowly. And in this sentence, you can also omit the ellos because comen here is already mean they eat. So they eat very slowly or they eat too slowly. And now we joining with the preposition. And what is the preposition? Preposition are words used before the nouns or pronoun to relate them to other words in the sentence. Preposition connects the following, connect the noun to another noun. I need this piece of paper. We connect this piece and the paper together. That piece of what? Of paper. So of is a preposition. Necesito esta hoja de papel. I need that piece of paper. We also connect a word to another word. The choice begin, begin what? To laugh. So this is a word. And this is also a word. And we connect it with the preposition to. El niño empieza a leer. Ah, mean to in Spanish. And we also connect the word to a noun. She study with her friend. Study is a word. And her friends is a noun. So we connect this together with a preposition with. And in Spanish, the preposition with is gone. Ella estudia con su amigas, with her amigas, friends. And also a preposition can join a verb to a pronoun. For example, what do you think? Thing is a verb and them is a pronoun. If we want to join it, we use the preposition about. So what do you think about them? And this is a interrogative sentence. So we add a question mark at the end of the sentence in English, but in Spanish, you have to remember to ask a reverse question marks at the beginning of the sentence as well. ¿Qué piensa de ellos? What do you think? De ellos, or them, or about them. So de is a preposition of or about. So in this last section of chapter one, we have learned how to describe the type, the si la hora, and the sparks of the speech. Like how to using the nouns, how to using pronouns, how to use words, adjective, adverb, and finally preposition. So that is for chapter one, and we will go to chapter two in the next section. Okay, if you think this video is good and can help you, please subscribe and give like. So you press the button at the lower right corner to subscribe. And remember, when I have a new videos, you better click the bell shaft and see the new video. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Again, thank you very much for listening to my tutorial videos. And if you need a pilot tutor for you to get a better mark or better score in your DSC examination in Hong Kong, the SAT examination, or just you want to improve your mathematics and English for your college and university study, please contact me at chingtong929 at yahoo.com.hk. My telephone number is plus one eight five two six five nine two eight six zero nine. 好多謝大家收聽我呢個 video。如果你係希望你個 mathematics 同埋你個英文係更加好嘅話咧，你想要一個 private tutor 啦，你可以隨時 contact 我嘅，令到你個 DSE exam 啦，或者你想考 SAT 啦，你亦都可以 contact 我，因為我都有一啲私人嘅補習喺呢一兩方面嘅。多謝大家 ，thank you， 拜拜 ，muchas gracias。